Hello everyone, this is Vicki Verley. Thank you so much for joining me for your monthly tarot scopes. These monthly mini readings offer a glimpse into what it's really like to have a personal consultation with me. A private reading is much more personal and in-depth. I psychically tune into your energy and get visions and impressions that are specific only to you. If you would like to order a personal reading from me, or check out some of the other products and services that I offer, you can do so by checking out the link below. And now without further ado, on to the reading. Sagittarius. Hello Sag, this is Vicki Burley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess, and we're going to do a mini tarot scope for the month of March of 2014. I'm also going to do a, a short astrology, for, particularly for your sign, at the end of the reading. Oh, look at that. There's some nice things. And one more. One more is falling out over here. Mm, okay. Well, certainly looks like love is coming in for you, and, and it's going to be um, probably earlier in the month during the time of Pisces, because we've got this water energy here. So definitely uh, somebody's coming in that's a romantic. Now, it's a Knight of Cups, but for everybody, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a man. You know, it, it depends on your sexual preferences, because I'm reading for so many people at once. But I do want to say that it looks like a romance is coming. Knights could be somebody a little bit younger, you know. Um, cups, spiritual, creative, um, not shut down. The, the Cups people, the Knight and the King of Cups, they have, their, they have that out there. They wear their heart on their sleeve. They're extending their the love energy out to you. You know, there's no, uh, you know, they're, they're deep and they're loving and they're, they're not a game, they're not playing any head games. You know, they're very much, um, they're real. There's somebody who's real and genuine that you can really trust and open up to. And a soulmate to boot. The Two of Cups is there. It's a soulmate. Uh, you know, you have all sorts of soulmates, of course, and if you want to watch my soulmate video, you can, you know, I explain a little bit more about that. But, you know, Two of Cups almost always is a romance, especially with the cup guy right next to it, you know, and then on the sun and all these cards here. So it looks like, you know, there's definitely something happening. There has been, I'm going to pull these out. What I've been doing, I'm going to show you how I see them. You know, I see them, when I'm reading, certain cards just kind of pop out and I know to, like, group them together. So I'm going to visually do that for you so you kind of can follow along if you want. This looks like there's been some financial struggles. And um, it's been, you should have left a long time ago. That's what I want to say. Because this card talks about moving on to something new, coming out of the turbulent water, moving into smoother sailing, going with the flow, um, being able to make it to where you want to be. You know, the, the hard part is over. When it's in reverse, it's like the hard part's never going to be over. It's never ending. You know, basically the bullshit is never ending. <laughs> That's kind of what this card means. It just never ends. And it's not go. you know, it's not... You're not getting ahead. This is card both ways. It's turbulent water again. And we're you're fully immersed in this turbulent water here. There's turbulent water everywhere, so you're fully immersed in it. And two of two of pentacles does tell us that we it's tied into um, finances. It's totally tied into finances, or it's draining your energy, thus creating lack in in your finances. So, and also the sun is in there too. That is draining your energy. Sun in reverse talks about. You know, I, it's your life force, your prana, your chi, you're shining, you're glowing. In reverse, it's like, I'm drained out. This is draining the hell out of me. I just, uh, and you're not able to shine. You're not able to function at full level because whatever this is, it's just, a, it feels like an endless pit, the money pit or something. That's what I want to say. And I'm seeing these waters, these swirling waters, I'm seeing like a cesspool or a tornado, like it's just, or a toilet flushing. You know, like you're flushing your water, money down the toilet or something. So it's time to get out of that. It's a drain. It's killing you. Get out of it. It's not reaping any rewards. There's no, there's no upside. There's just no upside. So this is your career or some kind of investment or thing you're tied into. Two could be two partnerships. It could be, you know, a, a business partnership. It could be a, a, a venture you're doing, a financial venture with somebody in a partnership. Maybe it's not working out. Maybe it is your relationship or your marriage. Maybe they're draining you financially. Because this is negative and then this is positive. This positive thing comes through. And with these cards, what I want to say, 
you know, this is a new influx of energy, of course, and it's a soulmate. But judgment, that's a very powerful card. It's a major arcana card, you know. And it talks about, well, first of all, it says the karmic debt has been paid. So you don't have to st stay in the cesspool. You don't have to stay in this turbulent water. You can, you can go forward. You can move on to the next phase. It's time. It's past time. You know, Six of Swords in reverse tells us that it's really past time. Um, you've paid your dues. You deserve this. Uh, but Judgment and Soulmate card together also, this is somebody very important coming into your life. Because the Judgment is really about your life's purpose, your soul contracts why you've incarnated here. It's a major arcana card. It's number 20. It's one of the higher major arcana cards here. So it's a very powerful card. And when it shows up, you, this is important. So this person is important. I'm not going to swear that they're a man or, you know, I'm not going to swear that it's romantic because it does seem like there's some financial things. But, you know, if you're married or living with somebody there, your money is entangled. There is financial things. So it may be something like that. But changes for the better. Somebody who's more loving, warm. That's another thing about the Cups people. They're loving. They're warm. Um, they, you know, they've got those watery eyes. You can get lost in the bedroom eyes, you know, forever, just looking at their eyes. So this is a, definitely where the way you want to go. This is what you're meant to do. This is powerful. This isn't some something you're just dabbling in or a mild... If it's a romantic thing, it's not a mild flirtation. This is a powerful soulmate. Thing that's going to happen. It's meant to happen. Okay, so Sag, let's take a look at the chart for the month with you, for personally for you. So what I'm doing is I'm putting Sag on the Ascendant, and that's how most astrologers do these monthly forecasts. So, you, you know, you can probably get something out of it, but you'll get more out of it if you know your real rising sign or Ascendant and you watch that video. So with Sag on the Ascendant, we've got two new moons this month, and we're going to look at the full moon placement as well. The first new moon is occurring on March 1st. And so in your case, it looks like it's happening in your fourth house. See how I determined that? This is one, two, three, four. The fourth house, home and family. Things around the home front. New moon, you want to make some changes. March 1st, that's the time to, to really implement it and go forward with it. Okay, and then uh, the um, full moon is going to be in the tenth house of your career. So st full moon, culmination, things are coming to a head, things are culminating. Um, you've gone as far as you can with this, whatever it may be. It also could be, it doesn't have to be negative. You know, full moon in the 10th house, this could be you finally get the gig that you're, or land the client that you're trying to get, or get the gig you're trying to get, or get the job you're trying to get. Or you, you have illumination. If you are doing something wrong, if like and maybe you're running your own business and like, well, what am I doing wrong here? Tenth house, you could say, oh, well, maybe I'll, I'll have a great idea. Maybe I'll do that. Or something will be shown to you about your career and, and changes you might need to make. Okay, so then the second new moon is going to be in Aries. So that's what? One, two, three, four, fifth house. Second new moon is fifth house. That's love and romance. This is occurs on uh, the 30th, but I feel like this is happening beforehand. You know, that's, well, it's love and romance. It's creativity. It's children. Um, if this is, if you're old enough to have children that are, you know, older and grown, maybe it's going to be a new relationship with your children. The fifth house primarily is, you know, um, it's your love affairs and stuff like that and creativity. Or if you have smaller children, maybe you're going to um, take a new beginning of how am I going to, I'm going to try a new path with my children. I'm going to try something new. So that concludes our mini reading for the month of March. If you'd like to get a personal consultation with me, it's, we get much more in depth. I, I'm psychic. I tune into your energy. I get messages through the cards that specifically pertain to you. I wanted to mention that I've added a new uh, reading option on my page for a 20 minute reading, which is more affordable. And I kind of like that time frame too. That's a nice time frame. It allows me a little space in between sessions to let the dog out, get some tea, and get settled in again for the next reading. Um, and you can find all that information and other services I offer on my the link below. Thank you so much for watching and liking and commenting and sharing my videos. Um, thank you so much for your donations. You don't have to apologize if you only can give a few dollars because it's all gladly accepted and it all adds up and there's no amount too small. This is Vicki Verley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. Remember, you are love and beauty incarnate, and I'll talk to you next month. What is Organite? 
Originally discovered in the 1930s by Wilhelm Reich, organ energy or etheric energy is present in living things including the human body. Reich proposed that illness occurs when our etheric body is out of balance and that positive organ energy could realign the etheric field, thus facilitating healing and balance of one's life force, chi or prana. It has since been scientifically proven that energy called piezoelectricity, meaning electricity resulting from pressure, is created by the compression of certain materials such as quartz crystals, wood, salt, sugar, ceramics, and bones. As the resin cures in an organic piece, it shrinks and compresses the organic matter contained within. The energy emitted creates a positive energy generator. You really can feel the energy coming forth from these pieces. Organite clears the air and neutralizes negative emotions as well as electronic clutter from our high-tech devices. Each organite piece is lovingly hand-created using intuitive pairing of materials to enhance and raise vibration and aid in ascension and a spiritual awakening. I use materials from nature, including the bark from a sacred willow for grounding and gold flakes to emulate the golden light basking down from the higher dimensions. Visit my Etsy shop for a wide selection of handmade organ pieces, especially designed for spiritual growth, including heart opening, chakra alignment and activation, and more. Visit www.organenergyflow.com dot etsy dot com to see more beautiful organ pieces and remember you are love and beauty incarnate